adventures it's rachel and welcome back to looking for adventure art and today we have a super awesome video this is a fountain pen 101 video and i am so excited to get to do it i have fallen in love with fountain pens so i'm going to go over all the basic information and some of the terminology and all the differences between them so you can pick what pen is going to be best for you but if you happen to be new here think about hitting that subscribe button down below and i'm not going to waste any time because this is going to be a lot of information so let's get started Currently in my collection, I have five different fountain pens, all with different nibs on them, and I love them each differently. Of course, I wanna get more fountain pens, but these are five and they range in price, so I will talk you through each one. But I wanted to get started by showing you the basics of the pen itself. So this is what a fountain pen looks like, and right here on the end, we have the cap, and on the top, this is called a finial. Now, some of them are just plain. Others have a very cool looking finial. Some of them are very basic. A lot of companies will stamp in their logo. Most of mine do not have a finial. They all, are all very plain, but this one has the nice X. This is a Lamy All Star, and I love the color. It is a great starter pen. It is one that I highly recommend. And so you know the finial, and the finial is on the cap, and then it comes with a clip. Now, a lot of different pens have a lot of different kinds of clips, and some are springier than others, some are a lot more firm, but that all comes down to preference, which I will talk about later. Now you take the cap off, and then you are left here with the body. So this is the body of the pen. And attached to the body of the pen, you have the grip section. Now this grip section is a little bit different than a standard fountain pen. It is exclusive to Lamy, and I kind of am in a love-hate relationship with it. A lot of people are, but it is not enough to get me to not want to buy the pen. This is still my all-time favorite pen, and I actually like it better than some other grips. I know that it's probably hard to pick up on the camera, but this is actually a triangle grip. It indents in here and is then rounded on the back, which most grip sections are just round all over like this one. So now that you have the grip and the body of the pen, to be able to fill the pen and to see the pen filling mechanism, all you're going to do is unscrew the body and you're left here. Now this can either be an ink cartridge or what I have in it currently because I like to use bottled inks is a cartridge converter. And this pops out and then it has this twist sort of piston fill mechanism. But this is a Lamy cartridge converter and it goes up and down. If you can see that little piston moving back and forth there. And that is how you suck up ink from bottles. This snaps right into the grip. You can feel it sort of firmly lock into place. That's when you know it's secure. And then down here attached to the grip is the nib. So this is what is used to write. And then underneath the nib is the feed. And a lot of the time now the feeds are plastic but there are still some ebonite feeds which are really, really amazing. Now when you have the pen ready to write, there is a certain term that you will probably hear me talk a lot about, especially when I start to do pen reviews, and that is if the cap is postable or not. And what that means is if this cap can post or sit on the back of the pen safely and securely. This is a postable pen, but it is back weighted, which means that the cap makes the pen feel very back heavy or weighted toward the back. It kind of starts to pull this way instead of being weighted equally or toward the front. Not all pens are able to be posted. I know that if you come from the rollerball world, that basically you can always post a rollerball pen just like I have here, because this has got no weight to it. So a lot of times you're used to just putting the cap on the back and writing with it. Some fountain pens, you cannot do that. This one, for example, is my Keras Customs Fountain K. And because it has threads in here, which 
are how the pen screws on because this cap screws on instead of pops off or known as a snap cap those threads would damage the body of the pen so this is not a postable pen now that i have shown you the basics of all of the parts of the fountain pen i want to talk about the different types of nibs nibs are very important important and they're also very much a personal choice the first thing that i want to say is that a german made nib is different than a japanese made nib and that is because the nibs are ground differently i mentioned this and showed this to you in my calligraphy 101 series now these are a japanese versus a german made nib and this is an extra fine and this is a medium and a lot of times especially when you're new you might not be able to see much of a difference the japanese nib a lot of times is ground much finer than a german nib so that means that this medium nib is really going to write like a fine or extra fine in a german made nib so that's something to keep in mind is just where your nibs on your pens are coming from Another thing to keep in mind is the material of the nib. Currently, I only have steel nibs, and that is perfectly acceptable. Most of the pens that you will have are most likely going to be steel nib, but when you get into some of the higher end pens, you'll start to see gold nibs on your pen, which are a little bit softer and more flexible, but by no means are they a flex nib. Do not try and flex your gold nibs out because you will spring them and ruin the tines, and that is very expensive. There are also some nibs that are palladium, but that is not as common. Most likely what you will be seeing and dealing with when you start out are steel nibs. Nibs also come in a variety of sizes. I have a variety of sizes here with me. I have an extra fine, I have a medium, I have a broad, I have a 1.5 millimeter stub nib, which is really great for calligraphy and some block writing. I did show a demo of that in the Calligraphy 101 video if you want to see how all of these nibs write. And then I have a flex nib. So it really goes down to personal preference as well when it comes to your nibs and your nib sizes. Now, depending on the size and the brand and who makes it, certain nibs can feel scratchier or smoother than others. I personally prefer a broad nib that is nice and smooth with just a little hint of feedback. The finer your nib is, the more likely that it is going to be scratchy, which is a lot of complaint in beginners. So you might want to try for a medium nib. That's kind of the safest point to start at. I personally find that Lamy makes a really good smooth nib with just a little bit of feedback. It seems to be my favorite so far. I have switched out to a Goulet broad nib on this Jinhao 750 and the Goulet nib I absolutely love but it is buttery smooth and almost a little too slippery for my taste but I still prefer it over a scratchy nib. It's probably my second favorite nib that there is. I do also really like the extra fine nib on my Keras Customs Fountain K. It happens to be really pretty smooth and I don't get a lot of scratchy feedback as I would with some other super fine nibs. The next thing that I want to show you is how to properly hold a fountain pen. I have noticed especially with recent generations and that they don't teach handwriting as much and for as long in schools that people start to be holding pens and pencils in a very strange way. So I have my pen here and what you want to do is exactly what I had mentioned in my calligraphy 101 video which is you want to have a secure grip but not a tight grip you don't want to be gripping it so tight that you're getting white knuckles that is known as a death grip and it will tire your hand out and hurt your fingers and it is really not good for you at all so what you want is you want a tripod grip and this is with one finger on each side of the pen and then one resting below supporting it and these two fingers are free the fountain pen will sit and nicely sort of just lay in the web of your hand there and then you can write. A lot of times you want your paper turned to a 45 degree and you don't want to be doing any weird angles with your wrist that is going to hurt. I've seen some people grip 
very oddly pens and pencils. Now one thing that I will tell you, and it's a little bit harder with a fountain pen, um, it's a lot easier with regular rollerball pens or with a pencil, but I have heard, I don't personally know, but I have heard that if you have arthritis, there is one other way to hold a pen that is still proper, and that is to hold it in between these two fingers and then on each side of the pen and then rest your thumb on the bottom. It still gives you a tripod grip and you can write. This seems to help with a lot of arthritis. I did try writing like this and it is not as difficult as it seems, but if you do not have arthritis, do not try it. Stick with a regular grip. But that is just a little note that I had heard, so hopefully if anybody has arthritis, that helps. There are many differences between pens, so I'm going to kind of talk about and go over all the differences that uh, factor into picking a pen that is right for you. So maybe you have some insight and then you can pick the best fountain pen. One of the first big differences between fountain pens that you are going to notice is the weight of them. So I have a very lightweight pen. This has almost no weight and this is my Noodler's Conrad and then I compare that to my Jinhao 750 and this is a very heavy pen. This is also a much rounder pen which factors into the next thing is you want to make sure that if you are picking a fountain pen for long term writing that it is not too heavy because it is going to tire your hand out and you are going to get a lot of fatigue. So I find that currently my favorite pen is my Lamy All Star. And this, I believe, is about 22 or 28 grams, and that is for the pen as a whole. Now, I write with it unposted, and that does make it quite a bit lighter weight. I believe that brings it to around 17 grams. I will post the actual weight on this video so you can see. But I find that this is a very nice lightweight pen. It has just a little bit of weight, so I get a nice writing flow, but it's not heavy and it does not tire my hand out. The other thing to consider, like I said, with the Jinhao pen is how fat or how round the pen is. Some pens can be very big and they're known as cigar pens. And also, not only how round they are, but how long they are. So, I find that I really enjoy the length of this Lamy pen. I don't want a pen that is too short. I want that something that is just going to nicely fit in the back of my hand. I do want to let you know that I have very, very tiny hands. So if you have small hands, you're going to want to definitely go with a lighter weight pen and a shorter pen. Some pens are very, very long and they're very big and they're very heavy. You also are going to want to take a look at the grip section. I did talk to you about the Lamy All-Star grip section and that it can be very controversial because it is a triangle grip and if you are trying to break your death grip on a pen, this might be a little difficult to start with because having those flat sections automatically makes me want to bear down. I have gotten over my death grip for the most part so this does not bother me anymore, but if that is something that you are worried about, you might want to go with a rounded grip section. You also want to think about if the cap is a snap cap, like this, which means it just pulls off, or if your pen is going to unscrew like so. This is uh, also personal preference. Some people prefer a snap cap because it's fast. Other people prefer to have something that unscrews because it feels a little bit safer. But the other thing to consider about is if it unscrews is are your fingers going to be resting on those threads and how sharp are those threads some people hold their pen right at the front of the pen so it's not a problem some people hold it farther back and their fingers rest on those threads and they can get very sharp and hurt your fingers i don't have a problem with the keras custom threads at all it seems to be really kind of nice, it doesn't bother me. I'm working on holding my pen a little bit farther back. So if you're worried about that, at least for me, it's not a problem. I also find that with the Noodler's Conrad, that these threads are inlaid really, really well, and they're very, very dull. I, I can barely even feel them running my hand across them. So this is very nice. 
Also, on certain pens, the grip section can be incredibly short or can be much longer. So depending on how big your fingers are and where you hold the pen, you should take a look at the length of the grip section. As I had mentioned before, you are going to want to think about if you want to write with your pen posted or unposted or if it even matters to you for that matter. I find that it really doesn't matter. I've gotten used to writing with it unposted. I'm also very happy when I can post a pen, but that really matters to some people. And that goes back to the weight because if you post the pen, the cap may be much heavier and for the Lamy All Star it is very back weighted. So I really don't like to write with this posted even though you can post it. The next difference between many fountain pens is the filling mechanism. So I showed you in my pen that if you unscrew the body, you can have a cartridge converter. There are different types of cartridge converters. For example, that is specifically a Lamy cartridge converter. There is also one that is a bit longer that is a standard international converter. And this, I believe, is the Con 50 and not the Con 70. Um, so that is for bottled inks and ink samples, but not all pens take those and some do use only regular ink cartridges, which you can buy. They are pre-filled with ink and you can just pop them in like this and the ink is in there ready to go. Another style of filling mechanism is a piston fill mechanism and this is what my Noodler's Conrad has and on the back here you can't even see it's so well blended in. You can unscrew this little cap in the back and just like with this ink cartridge system where you have this piston that goes up and down it is already built in to the pen. Now I have some ink in here so I am not going to turn this but if you turn this it will bring the piston portion up and down and it can fill the pen so it will hold more ink. There is one other type of filling option and I do not have a pen that has it but it is a vacuum fill and it uses basically a suction cup pressure and a vacuum to pull up the ink and it also has then a space that it blocks it off. You can hold a lot of ink in your pen. It's really pretty cool. I hope to get my hands on one soon. If you want to see a vacuum fill pen, you can look at some of the Twisby Vac 700s. There is a Twisby Vac Mini. You can check them out on the Goulet website. He has some really awesome videos showing the Vac fill method, but I do not have one here currently to show you. I know that there are a lot of options for fountain pens, but I'm just going to go over a few more, and that goes back to the nibs. I did talk about the nib preference and the nib style and the uh, where the nibs come from, but another thing to think about for pens is with the pen and how they set the feed and the nib determines how wet or dry the pen writes. And what I mean by that is how much ink is coming out. If a lot of ink comes out and you get a lot of ink on the paper as you're writing, then that is a very wet pen. Versus if a not a lot of ink is coming out but enough to write with, that is a drier pen. I personally like to write with very wet pens and I like to pick inks that are very wet as well because I like to see all the pretty shading and color on the paper. Now if you happen to be in a regular work setting and you're using regular copy paper, you are probably not going to want quite a wet pen because you don't want the ink bleeding through your copy paper. You're also most likely going to want to write with a fine nib or an extra fine nib. You might be able to get away with certain medium nibs, but you're not going to want a really wet broad nib like I like to write with because it will just bleed through the paper. And the last main thing that I want to talk to you about for fountain pen differences is the material. They come in a bunch of different materials from acrylic to aluminum, they come in copper, they come in resin, they come in ebonite, they come in macrolon, which is really great if you want to wick away moisture from your hands. Um, there are a ton of different types of materials that you can get and 
Part of it is the look of them. Part of them deals with the weight of them. I know that copper patinas really well over time. It looks gorgeous from the oils in your hands. However, it is a lot heavier versus some of the acrylics and some of the resins. You can get really pretty cool swirl patterns and all kinds of fun stuff. You can have some really nice aluminum pens that they can have anodized aluminum like this blue one and you can get a bunch of fun different features. I love that in my Jinhao pen, it has these beautiful holographic glitters in it. So it really comes down to personal preference and how it feels. Some of the pen materials will warm up faster in your hands. Some will wick away moisture. So if your hands get sweaty when you write, that is something to think about. There are certain materials that are better than that than others. And then, of course, the price of the pen, but that is going to be up to you. There are going to be pluses and minuses and variations and variables for each pen in all the different price ranges. But I personally suggest that if you are beginning, you might want to start with a 50 and under pen. I really like the Lamy All Store. Or you can get either this Pilot Metropolitan for $15 or this Jinhao pen if you want a little bit of a heavier pen for $9 or $10, I believe. But they are great options. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about inks, but I did mention that you can get regular cartridges that just pop right in. They are not the cartridge converters that can take bottled ink. But for my personal preferences for bottle inks that I am using right now, I love the Black Swan and Australian Roses. I love the Alt Golgren from Roar and Klinger. I love Diamine's Autumn Oak, and I love a lot of the Pilot Orochizuku inks. I have the really pretty three set that I had shown in my calligraphy haul video. I will be doing a separate 101 on inks itself and sort of the differences for fountain pens and other ink types for uh, pointed pen calligraphy and all of that, but I'm not going to talk about that too much right now. So the last thing that I want to go over, as I know that this is a very long video, are some helpful items in uh, that you can use for fountain pens. Now some of the helpful items that I have found for me in particular are, is this Goulet grip. This helps really grab onto that nib, especially if you have small hands, and pull the grip off because you don't actually want to grab it by the tines or the front of it. I had mentioned what the tines are in my 101 video, but basically there is this split right down the middle here and it separates these two pieces and that's what helps the ink flow through. So each one of those is called the tines and you never want to grab those because they can become misaligned and out of place and that would be very bad. So I find that this Goulet grip helps a lot and it was super cheap, it was like $1.50. And then I got the Goulet pen flush kit and this is really helpful for cleaning your fountain pens in the upcoming weeks i'm going to do a how to clean your fountain pen video but this goulet pen flush is amazing it comes with the flush it comes with its nice little own bottle that you can then fill and clean your fountain pens in so you're not wasting the whole thing it comes with a bulb syringe and then it comes with two blunt end syringes so don't worry uh, but these are great for cleaning your pens and also filling your pens. So when I show you how to fill your own fountain pens, we will be using these and they are so, so, so helpful. The other thing that I do not have yet is a Goulet uh, pen tuning kit and that comes with some mesh and a few other things and a Goulet loop so you can really start to see your nib and fine tune your nib to the exact preferences that you want. That is it for this 101 video today on fountain pens. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you learned a lot. But before we go, I do have one last question for you and that is our question of the day. My question for all of you is what information did you find most helpful in this video? I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions, so let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for all the daily updates. And if you're following me on my calligraphy series, or if you happen to make any awesome things from my channel, feel free to email me, or tag me on Facebook, or Twitter, or Instagram, or I don't know, whatever kind of social media -ness that you guys do, because I want to see it. And don't forget, Every day is a new adventure, so come back next time for a new adventure with us.